Hi, I'm Matt Canavero. The problem that me and my group investigated was how we would make the best type of glue given the recipes and ingredients that we would use to make such glues. The theory behind these glues is that by separating the curds and the whey from milk, the whey being the more liquidy part and the curds being the more fatty substance, by mixing the curds with a mixture of baking soda and water, we would create a sticky substance that when dried would seal two objects together. However, the rubber glue that we tested was more powerful using more chemicals such as gelatin and glycerin to make a more sticky type of glue. The materials we used to make the regular glue were vinegar, skim milk, water, baking soda, two 500 milliliter beakers, filter paper, squeeze bottle of distilled water, and an empty squeeze bottle for glue. The materials we used to make the super glue were white vinegar, whole milk, baking soda, one 500 milliliter beaker, a hot plate, filter paper, rubber grubbers, plastic gloves, a squeeze bottle for distilled water, a thermometer, and an empty squeeze bottle for glue. The materials we used to make the rubber glue were water, unflavored gelatin, white vinegar, glycerin, a 500 milliliter beaker, a hot plate, thermometer, an airtight jar, a one liter beaker, and a brush. The materials that we used in the trials for the glue were nine napkins, a stopwatch, six pieces of wood, and three wooden splints. The general procedure for making the regular glue and super glue was using vinegar to separate the curds of the milk from the whey. We then filtered out the curds from the whey using a filter and by mixing the curds with baking soda and water, we created our glue products. The procedure for the rubber glue was a bit different from the other glues. First, we had to boil water on a hot plate. Then, once boiling, we had to take the boiling water beaker off the hot plate to slowly cool. While boiling, we applied the gelatin and stirred until it was completely dissolved. Next, we added the vinegar to the solution and allowed our solution to solidify. We then poured our glue solution into an airtight jar, placed the jar into the fridge overnight, and allowed the glue to continue to cool until it was ready to be reused. So we tested three types of glue as I stated before, the regular glue, the super glue, and the rubber glue. Both the super and the regular glue were made using whey and curds, the whey being a waste product of the actual curds that we were going to use to make the glue. By using the curds and mixing them with the baking soda and the water, we were able to create a sticky substance that would result in our glues. So first we have here is the regular glue. The regular glue was made with, of course, as I stated before, the curds, the baking soda, and the water. However, this regular glue, when tested with the wood blocks, did not stay. So the stickiness was not very strong. By not using as much water in our glue and using more of the curds and not having a more diluted glue solution, we were able to make the super glue. The super glue was made in the same way except with less water and when we stuck it to two pieces of wood, they didn't come apart, which was very interesting. We weren't expecting that. The third glue that we made was the rubber glue. The rubber glue was made with the glycerin and the gelatin which created a more sticky substance and which created here a polymer, which is kind of like your jellos and other stuff like that. The polymer was, could only be applied as a glue when melted, which is why the rubber glue made it such a strong glue and which is why it made it very strong and not separable. Two changes that we could make with this experiment, one could be to use different types of milk for each type of glue. This is because a whole milk, which has more fat and thus would produce more curds, would create a stickier type of glue. Whereas skim milk, which has less fat, which thus would produce less curds, would create a less sticky type of glue. Also, we could use more quantitative data rather than qualitative data for our results. The error with qualitative data is that, as you could tell from me trying to pry the pieces of wood apart, is very variable. For example, if someone was stronger than me, they would have more ease trying to pull the pieces of wood apart. If we used quantitative data, such as a hook, where we could apply weights 
and each degree of weight would con correspond to a different strength and stickiness of the glue, we would have less variable results for the different type of person that did the experiment. So two sources of error that we could have gotten from this lab, one would have been the amount of water that we used to make each type of glue. This is because the recipe called for an amount of water that would reach a gluey consistency. The error with reaching a gluey consistency is that we didn't know exactly how much water we would use. So if we applied too much water, it would create too liquidy of a glue, which could have been the reason why our regular glue was so much less sticky than our super or our rubber glue. Another error is that with the rubber glue, we had to cool it by putting it in the fridge because we had to boil it to get it to a liquid and then we had to cool it to get it to its solid form. The error with this is that we didn't know for how long we had to cool it. For all we know, it could have gotten solid and may have not been more je as jello-y as we had gotten it to be. However, since we didn't know how long exactly we had to leave it in the fridge, it may have had different results on the type of glue that we made than if we had known how long exactly to leave it in the fridge. So the main follow-up glue experiment that we would do to our glue experiment that we did in school would be that we would use more quantitative methods to get our data. This is because the way we did it is by using human strength. And the error with that is that it's qualitative data, which would mean that it is less quantitative using numbers such as measurements or in this case we could have used weights for degrees of strength. If we used quantitative data such as weights we could have gotten more consistent results because it wouldn't matter how weak or strong the person was doing the experiment you would still get consistent results depending on your strength. It wouldn't be dependent on how strong you were as an individual. There are two different types of glue. Under certain circumstances, one beads up more than the other when a drop is placed on the table. Compare the polarities of the two glues. Which one is a greater polarity than the other, and how may this affect its surface tension? Hint, think about which one may have more water in the solution.